recaptures the dribble. Three to shoot. Banks it in! A three-pointer for Trey Young! You are a cheat code! What's up everybody? Welcome back to another one of my videos and in this video we're going over part three of my stock up stock down series where we're going over the small forward position. So first up we're going over are the stock ups and the first uh, player on my list is Michael Porter Jr. whose ADP is at 74 so we're getting about the eighth round and he's currently the second rated small forward. And my recommendation is his stock may not be any higher than it is right now. So I would either sell very high or keep. He's young. And the reason why I would um, consider trading him is because even though he's young, he's had an injury riddle past. And Jamal Murray's missing time. So that's actually increasing his usage. Um, the crazy thing about Michael Porter Jr. is he hasn't even been starting that I'm aware of, and he's putting up insane stats. His shooting is crazy. It's like he never left the bubble. He's averaging almost 20 points a game. His whole whole category stats are very good. I don't know them off the top of my head, but I know he's shooting over 50% from the field, and he's at like 88% from the free throw line again. And it's just, it's like bubble deja vu. He's killing it, and I kind of... I hope it stays like this, even though I don't have them. I wish I had them, but I mean, it is what it is. I regret not being able to get him because I was targeting him in my draft. But if you do decide to sell him, I would try and sell him high. I would probably target nothing less than a top 20 overall player because he is worth that. Even if you have to package like a second player to get a top 20 overall player, I definitely would. You could probably even sell him for someone like a Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell, um, Maybe you could even get a Jimmy Butler. Maybe if you are okay with taking the stock down. Um, you might even be able to get Pascal Siakam and another player for Michael Porter Jr. If you just are afraid of the injury risk. Alright, so next up on my list is Jeremy Grant, whose ADP is 84th overall. So we're getting him in about the ninth round. And he's currently the third rated small forward. And he had such a bad preseason. I'm... Probably, like most of you, I'm very surprised to see that he came out swinging once the regular season started. So my recommendation would be to sell high. His stock is not going to last this high. So he is shooting double the volume of threes than he has in the last two season, uh, two years, which he's at seven and a half right now. And two, he hit, excuse me, he was at three and a half last year and 3.7 two years ago so he's doubling his threes and he's at 37 percent while his career is 35 percent so that's not likely to change much he, he may even keep that volume i don't know if he will but no one else is on detroit really it's everyone it's any one man's game in detroit right now so can he maintain this level of volume i don't know we're gonna find out we're gonna find out who turns into the number one option because I think Detroit wanted to be killing Hayes, but he's he's been awful, to say the very least. And I do know Josh Jackson is stepping up, but we'll get to him in a minute. So he's his free throw percentage is currently at 86%, and he's never even been this close to 86% in his career. While he, <laughs> excuse me, his career percent from the free throw line is 67%, and last season was his career best. It was at 75%, and two years ago it was at 71%. So it is trending upward, but I don't think he's going to last at 86%. Uh, he's never shown us that he's been able to hit that high of a percentage all season long. So I don't expect it. I do expect it to come down between 75 to 80 max. And that's like hard 80. Like, I don't think that's going to happen. Also, 37 minutes a game is what he's getting, and I feel like that's an unreasonable, unreasonable amount of playing time to expect from a player like him all season long in a condensed schedule. I just don't see that happening. Maybe you do. Maybe you disagree with me. But I don't think he's going to get 37 minutes a game every night. I do think that's going to come down. So if that comes down, his all of his stats are going to come down with it. So it's just something to consider. He's not going to shoot this well 
at some point he will cool off and then his whole stats are going to also drop as well. So if you're going to sell, sell high. I, I can't think of someone who I would be like, oh, okay, I'll trade this player for Jeremy Grant because I'm not I'm personally not high on Jeremy Grant and I don't want him, but you could probably get a top 50 player for Jeremy Grant, top 50, top 60 player. All right, so next up is Brandon Graham. So his ADP is 26, so you're getting about the third round, and he's currently the sixth overall small four. So he's the sixth overall small four, but I look at his stats, and if I had to guess, I would say he's no less than the number two overall small four. He's putting up great stats all around the board. His uh, field goal percentage is only at 45%, so that may be the reason why it's dipped down a little bit, but even still, his whole categories are off the charts. So I wouldn't... I would not sell him. I would keep him. <laughs> Excuse me. I would keep him unless someone was offering me like a Dame Lillard. I know I keep bringing up Dame, but I think he is going to be a hot commodity this year since he's starting so low and he's, you know, he's a first round talent. But he was just, he's just not playing like first round talent right now. So either sell high or keep and hold on to him. I would personally keep him, but if you're going to sell him, sell him super high. Um, he's playing like a, at least an early second round talent right now, like a top 12 player at the very least. And like I said, his 45% field goal percentage is the only thing that's hurting him. He's also shooting 83% from the free throw line, which is helping. And he's still seeing a very high usage and posting great secondary categories which is why I'm surprised he's only rate, rated as the sixth overall small, small forward. So the loss of Drew Holiday has, seems like the loss there has given Brandon Ingram some extra usage, which well, I wasn't prepared for. I thought with Zion coming in, Zion was going to be the man coming into the season. So I was like buyer beware um, on uh, Ingram, but I was completely wrong in this regard. He's killing it, and I don't see why it would stop. Kind of wish that the Sixers took him over Ben Simmons, just saying. Anyway, next player on my list is Josh Jackson, which he's been undrafted in probably every single league, and he's already the 13th rated small forward. My recommendation is to just hold or try buying if you don't have him, if you want him. Or maybe try and package him in with another player to try and get a top-tier player. He took over Dellen Wright's spot in the starting rotation. He's looks like he's going to get uh, 28 to 30 minutes a night from here going on. And when Rose and Griffin sit, and they will sit a lot, he will get an uptick in usage. Now, he's going to probably be inconsistent. It's just going to happen. He's still only in his fourth season as an NBA player, but he's he should see good usage throughout his um, throughout the season. And now that especially now that he's starting, I I expect him to be a player worth having on your team. I think the the question mark on him whether or not he's a roster player or a waiver player or a stream player is is out of the question now. He's averaging seventeen and six, good percentages. Um, and he gives you, he's not a one 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 player, but he's close to those, those numbers. So that's also another plus for him. And he's got low, low turnover. So he's a very good play, uh, player pickup. And if no one's picked him up in your league yet, pick him up. So again, if you're going to try and trade him, try and package him for a two for one, um, with another player to try and get a top tier player. Cause he's, he's going to probably, he's probably like the perfect trade bait right now especially if you're overloaded with small forwards. All right, so the last player on my list for the stock up part of this uh, video is Kyle Anderson, who also went undrafted, and he's currently the 17th rated small forward. So the one player in my league picked him up at the perfect time. He picked him up after he had like one really good game, and then Ja got hurt, and then that was history. And that's kind of how it is with Kyle Anderson right now. He's going to get an uptick in usage now that John Moran's out for the next three to five weeks. And I would sell high right now because now is probably the perfect opportunity to cash in on Kyle Anderson. There's no telling what he's going to hold, what kind of value he's going to hold for the long term uh, of the entire season. 
especially once Stroud Moran comes back. But for right now, his numbers look good. He's shooting the ball pretty well. I think he had a bad night last night, but I don't remember his stats off the top of my head. Um, but nonetheless, he's going to he's gonna be a top option for Memphis. He's going to... Um, He's going to see his, his fair share of usage. And overall, I would try and sell him high. Try and get what you can for him because once we get later into the season, once Shaw comes back and he's fully healthy, I don't know what to expect from him. Uh, do you? If you feel like you know what you're going to get out of Kyle Anderson once Shaw comes back, you may want to keep him. I don't know. I would sell. Um, I don't know what you can get for him, but someone like a Lari Mark Cannon may be your best uh, bet, somewhere, someone in that range. All right, so now we're going over the stock down uh, players of the list. And the first player up is Andrew Wiggins, whose ADP is at 95, so you're getting about the 10th round. And he's currently the 13th rated small forward. My recommendation is if you have him, try and get rid of him. If you don't have him, don't pick him up. Don't. Do not, do not buy him. He literally just looks like he's there to get paid. He's put up one pretty good game, but to start the season, he he looks terrible. He doesn't look like he wants to be out on the court to me, and that only spells bad news bears for any Andrew Wiggins owner. He may get out of that. He may bring the effort because right now he's drawn little to no effort. He may at some point. But I don't want that kind of player on my team that I don't know what kind of effort I'm going to get from him. So next up on my list is TJ Warren. His ADP is 58, and he's the 32nd rated small forward. So my recommendation is to sell if you can, if you could get something reasonable for him, or to buy low. Uh, he is injured right now. Now he's definitely injured. He's no longer day-to-day. -day. I believe he is actually out. And... He is only providing low value performances when he is playing. So he may be, it's hard. I don't want to call him a bust so early in the season, but it's trending that way. If he doesn't get, when he, does, when he comes back, if he doesn't produce, he may be one of the busts we're talking about at the end of the season. All right, next player on my list is Kelly Oubre Jr., whose ADP is at 53. And he's the 34th rated small forward. So if you can, if you do not have him, I would try and buy, buy low. If you do have him, it's up to you whether or not you believe in him. I personally would try and trade for him. I did try and trade him for him in my league, but the guy the guy I tried trading with came up with a really funny um, counter offer, to say the least. Um, anyway, I would try and buy him low. If you can, his shooting has been horrific. It's actually like close to breaking records. That's how bad his shooting is. But the thing I love about Kelly Oubre, unlike Andrew Wiggins, is he brings the energy. He brings the effort. His defensive stats are still there because he, he knows his shot's going to fall. And once it does, he'll be good. And, but for now, he just has to focus on getting, you know, putting in the grinder stats, getting those blocks, getting those steals and the, the tough rebounds, and he's doing that. I see that on a night out, in night out basis from him. So once his shooting starts to, once he finds a shot, I should say, he should be, well, maybe he will never live up to the height that we thought he would live up to, but he was still going to be a strong player for anyone who has him at some point in the season. Maybe he won't average at 20 to 22 points that ESPN projected. Maybe it'll be like 17 or 18 points, but the defensive stats are, they look like they're going to stay. So that's at least trending. Um, that should help him trend in the right direction throughout this, uh, throughout any part of the season. All right. And the last player I have on the stock down and for this video is Robert Covington, who's looked terrific. Um, his ADP was 72, so you're getting on about the 8th round, and he's currently the 26th overall small forward. And my recommendation is to trade him if you can, or you may have to actually drop him. So he was traded from Houston to Portland in the offseason, and he just hasn't found his footing with, um, with Portland. Not only is he shooting poorly, he's simply just not getting the shooting attempts. Like, Lilliard and CJ McCollum aren't driving to kick. They're 
they're driving to try and challenge the defense to, to shoot the ball. So they, they aren't kicking it out. And to be honest, it looks like CJ and Lillier are becoming a bit of ball hogs, and I know that's kind of what they are. But it's really hurting them in all facets of the team. And you could see that with Robert Covington, who just he just uh, hit his season high in his last game with eight points. He's averaging like five points a game, like three rebounds. And his defensive stats aren't really that there and uh, either. The way he's shooting the ball so poorly in, in both field goal percentage and free throw percentage. If you can trade him, I would. Just get rid of him and let someone else deal with that problem. He's on a new team. He's not shooting the ball well. And he's just not blending in with the with the guards. So I I think if you can, trade him. All right, guys. That is all, all I have for uh, the third part of this series. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button if you uh, liked it also, as I'm going to be bringing more fantasy basketball content like this all season long. All right, guys, that's all I have. I'll see you in the next video. In the next video, have a good day.